Starting from our release 2020.2, Typhoon Hill Control Center will now be able to easily explore generic NZC code, helping users to quickly build firmware for a compatible target and also test their own controller with the generated code in the C Hill environment. The main highlights of this new functionality can be summarized as follows. Now, you can export controller and signal domain subsystems for external use. It is also an important step towards rapid control prototyping for power converter and microgrid controllers. It helps the user to generate platform agnostic NZC compatible code that can be used for a wide variety of embedded applications. Furthermore, the C code export settings menu was also improved. The user can define the schematic settings the desired export directory for the generated C code. The improved readability helps the user to better understand and debug the exported C code. Internal types such as integer, unsigned integer, and real can be directly mapped to your platform. All subsystems modeled using signal processing toolbox can be fully exported via this new feature. And as you probably must be wondering, yes, the generated C code can be directly used in common IDEs such as Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio, for instance. Therefore, you might be asking yourself so far how to do this. Thus, I will show you step by step how to get up and running a C Hill application using the C code export feature. Here you can see the Typhoon Hill Control Center schematic editor, main interface. Let's load here an existing project. Here you can see a simple example consisting of a three-phase inversion operating in open loop with an induction machine as a load. I'll quickly compile this example to show you in virtual hill what you should expect at the end of this video when our project will be running from our physical controller in real time. Let's load it. Next, let us select the respective Hue SCADA panel, which has a scope with our desired signals loaded. Let us just run the simulation, set the sources, and the references. We can see here all the three load currents working as expected for a simple project like this one. Following that, let us head back to the schematic editor. To be able to use the C code generation, the desired blocks that comprise the system must be inside a subsystem. In that case, let us now transform these blocks here in a subsystem. To do this, let's select them, right click here, and then create subsystem from selection. Let us then just rename the inputs and output ports because this is a nice tip. 
the name you give to the export will appear at the exported C code. So let's change that. Let us then head back, resize it, and this is a nice tip also. Let us rename this subsystem to a name that we want, refgen for example. And then I will only change in the schematic editor settings um, the default export folder to a dedicated folder for to better organize and show more easily and simply which files are exported. So I'll select here. It will be this generated code folder. I'll click and OK. Now we can right click here in our subsystem, go to C code export and then click on export. Ok, if no errors are drawn, it should be fine. So let us take a look at those files. Here in this folder, I have all those files, right? Here you can see the C code. And also the function declarations. That being so, we can use those files to make our own project using a chosen microcontroller as a target. For this demonstration, I'll be using the F28335 microcontroller from Texas Instruments in a DIMM 100 control card form, attached to the UDSP interface port. Let us open the Code Composer Studio. I will load the project here, where I have already started using an example and have modified it so we can use our generated files. So, you can load your files this way, right clicking and add files and then you can select all files needed to the project. I started using an example as a base and then I changed the following lines to, to accomplish it. Here, also I have included the refgen.h and then also here at the bottom where I used our generated function. Now we are ready to build our project here and run it using the F28335 card. Let's run it. I will now change here at the schematic editor um, our project. So 
okay so i'll disable this controller because our controller right now is running into it will be running into the microcontroller so i'll just disable it here also okay then uh, let us click here and configure um, the internal modulator to digital input per switch in this case the pwm outputs from our microcontroller will be connected to the digital inputs 1, 7, 2, 8, 3, and 9. Let's click OK. All configured, let us compile our project again. And now our project will be running on the Hill device. So let us load a different SCADA now. This panel, right? Let's then activate it. It's already active. Let's run our model. So, um, as a result, we can run our project and see the currents in real time, just as expected. Um, right now, I'll set the currents as analog outputs from our Hill device, so we can see them in real time using an oscilloscope. So, here, the analog outputs. And I'll set them. Here, so I can have space on board. And, and here, okay. Right. And there. Using the C code generator, one is capable to be up and running with a controller in the loop application or c help in a matter of minutes. There you can see the load currents in the oscilloscope and they match perfectly well with the currents in our Hill device.